So the Hawk got buffed. The reload is now a respectable 28 second stock. And with my current build, I'm seeing reload times down in the 18 second range. And that's nine 406 millimeter guns, the same armament as an Iowa class battleship, basically. Except we have battle cruiser dispersion. It makes for a pretty nasty combination. The build I'm using to achieve this, basically full DPM and reload. Aiming systems, mod one, prop conceal, of course, and main battery reload and slot four. The ship has good speed and decent concealment. The largest problem she has is her armor. This is probably the worst armor scheme of any battleship at tier seven. 15 inch guns can overmatch the bow and the Citadel is Marlboro bad. If you time a turn wrong and an enemy battleship catches you with an AP salvo, you could get erased <laughs> in one salvo. So it's all about timing with the ship. My go-to commander is John Fisher, and honestly, I'm starting to like this guy more than Azer Lane Nelson, and he's free to play. Partially because of a great base trait and the skill in slot two. PC players will recognize this as the Walmart version of Adrenaline Rush. You lose HP, you get a faster reload. I'll go into more details a little bit later on specific stats, but this can be very, very potent. And the inspirations I've been going with are D. Ravel and Azerlane Colorado, both of which are buffing the reload even more, and Azerlane Colorado giving us a little bit of, of shell grouping. If you're free to play and looking for another inspo, Kondo would be good for some added stealth. Seriously, if you're ever in doubt for an inspiration on a battleship, you really can't go wrong with Cunningham Iachino or Kondo. I think Kondo should be on that level. Never underestimate how powerful a stealthy battleship is. But without further ado, let's jump into a match together. Riposte. You know, this map is starting to grow on me. And I'll make a bold claim here. Trident is the best map in the game. There, I said it. <laughs> it's close, it's tight quarters, it's action packed. I freaking love that map. I don't seem to get it very often though. But honestly, as long as I'm not on Crash Zone, Shatter, or Warrior's Path, I'm happy. Or the Atlantic, that one gets super old. Let me know your favorite map down below. I would love to hear from you. We spawned mid, and that is not really ideal for this ship because the biggest thing she has going for her is concealment and speed, and both of those things are going to do well on a flank. With the speed boost consumable running, we can get up to about 34 knots and a speed flag, so let's do that. Let's head over to A side and not get trapped in the middle. We definitely want to be in open water. Getting stuck bow in in a hawk, probably game over, I would say. We got good matchmaking. We got some New Orleans out here. We're definitely top tier. I saw a Nagato on the enemy team, a Colorado. So pretty good matchmaking for a Hawk. Sharnhorst, yeah, not bad. Spotted, which is kind of surprising. We have decent 12 kilometer-ish conceal, so the DD must be an A right in front of us. Let's go ahead and angle out so we don't get blippity blapped. Aside from the speed and conceal, which are both great on this ship, the next thing she has going for her is these awesome 406 millimeter guns. Here's Nagato, 18.7 kilometers. Let's see what kind of damage we can deal. Luckily, this is a tier six battleship, so we should be able to kind of bully him a little bit. Now the AP, I believe it is short fused AP. I haven't heard any different. There we go. That was a pretty good salvo to start, 24K. Um, but yeah, short fused AP. So generally, you know, Brit short fused battleship AP is going to have a harder time penetrating battleships, especially at longer ranges. But I mean, that was pretty good. We got a broadside Vanguard. Looks like this is going to be one of those matches, huh? <laughs> Lots of broadsides. Uh, and right now, without taking any damage, our reload is about 22 seconds. Okay, Torps up here. So let's be careful. We definitely should probably start turning out. Luckily, we have a DD right in front of us. Oh, and there's a scary looking smoke screen. But yeah, DD in front of us that can spot for us. Let's actually hold our next salvo because we might get a shot at this destroyer here. If he just pokes out of his smoke screen, he's close enough. I'm not sure what it was. He did just fire all of his torps off, so we should be safe here for the moment. Yeah, gotta watch out for that Colorado. There it is, it's a Benson. Uh, let's see, is he gonna go forward? Let's use the torps. His engine got knocked. Nice, okay. 
<laughs> Death Strike First Blood. That's going to set this one up pretty nicely. And it looks like the majority of their team is coming this way. We have a Nagato, a Richelieu, a Vanguard, a Colorado. So we're going to stay kind of bow out. Yeah, these guns are pretty, pretty darn good. Ninth best DPM now at the tier for AP. Not bad. The HE is pretty great as well. Big alpha numbers and a massive 45% fire chance. Good hit on the Vanguard, even from this sort of range. Granted, he is just flat broadside. These guys keep kind of sailing this way. This is going to be a high damage game, I would say. But yeah, 45% fire chance. There aren't many HE shells in the game that do better than that. I think, you know, the Conqueror, the Lion, the Nelson, like this is up there with the, the best fire chance and the best HE shells in the game. Now, I usually always keep the AP loaded just because it, it seems like as soon as I load HE, that is when someone's going to go broadside. It never fails. Let's see how this salvo does on Colorado. Pretty good. We should basically overmatch him about everywhere with these 16 inch guns. So yeah, we're just going to bully some tier sixes here. This is kind of how I like to play this ship on the fringes of its concealment. So if things start to go poorly, what's going on on the other side of the map? If things start to go poorly, then you can um, quit shooting, disappear, relocate, things like that. It's definitely not an up close battleship in my opinion. The accuracy is behaving pretty well in this game. Let's see here. Colorado is probably going to take those torps and die. We might be able to get a little bit more damage on him, though. Well, we'll yoink the kill. <laughs> we'll yoink the kill. Hence the uh, the name of our clan. Yeah. Anyways, accuracy. The Sigma is low. It's 1.6. So that's pretty, pretty bad in terms of battleship shell grouping. But it has battle cruiser dispersion. So the dispersion ellipses are a lot smaller. And that's great. That is awesome. Honestly, at one point, I think I tried this ship without anything buffing the grouping at all. So in our game, Cunningham and Iachino buff grouping, whereas Hazerlane Scharnhorst would buff dispersion. And when I tried it without anything buffing the reload, I didn't have a great experience. Okay, we picked up another tier six battleship kill. <laughs> we can turn and start selling in here. But with Azerlane Colorado, giving us just a little bit of grouping and then also taking a uh, flammable cannoneer in slot one. I feel like both of those things just balance it out perfectly. And we're actually using on second thought in slot three. So we get a little faster reload there. Not to mention that we could, when the guns are fully loaded, switch from AP to HE in 55% of the time, I think. It's nothing like Azerlane Dunkirk, of course, but still pretty helpful, I would say. So yeah, Flam Cannoneer. I usually don't ever do that on a battleship, especially one like this that has survivability issues. But there's a reason I want to do that. So with John Fisher, when we lose health, we actually get a faster reload. What is that skill called? Dance with Death. So yeah, every 1% of health that we lose, the reload gets 0.16% faster. Now that sounds complex, so let's just say at half health, 50% health, our reload improves about 2.25 seconds. So the reload gets pretty quick and it actually benefits you to lose a little bit of health. This is a build where you definitely want to try to save your heals for when you really need them. You don't want to be at max health all the time. You know, if someone takes a lot of your health away, that's fine. It's just going to buff your DPM. Oh, Richelieu. It's <laughs> a lot of hate flying through the air, Richelieu. Oh, poor fella. Uh, we're in Kraken territory. We have three kills. We have a New Orleans coming in here. Let's see if we can get him from long range. And then, well, the points are going to run out. We won't even have a chance to get Vanguard. So never mind. Even if he is flat broadside. Unless our battleship dies right here beside us. Pretty low health. All right, never mind. <laughs> the, the yoink happened to us. Hey, that's how it goes, man. You yoink some and you get yoinked some. Let's see how the match turned out. Pretty decent, 167k. 24 base, I'll take it. We'll go jump into another one. Land of Fire, mid spawn again. And this map is one that it really doesn't let us use our legs that much. I feel like, uh, you know, you sail too fast in one direction or the other, and you're already within shooting range of another flank. So what I would like to do here, let's turn out this way. 
Typically, B spawn guys are going to be heading towards C, and we just have to be careful against the reds that spawned at A, because if they push up, they could be able to shoot our broadside. But uh, yeah, we'll just kind of position here, see how things unfold. Again, play at the edge of our concealment, be cautious, and then that can kind of let us know what we need to do. But yeah, this is a ship where you, or a build, I would say, where you absolutely want to attract some damage. And I think I talked about this with the new Azerlane Rossiya commander. She has a similar skill, or maybe the same exact skill. Here's Veneto. We'll see if we can get a pot shot at 18 kilometers. Anyways, a similar skill that as you're losing HP, you're getting a faster reload. And in that video, I was talking about how it's only going to benefit you if you play your battleships a little more aggressively, I guess I would say. You know, put yourself into situations where you're tanking damage for your team, which is kind of your job anyways. And when you do that, yeah, you're going to get a DPM buff out of it. Okay, FDG shot. Let's try to duck in underneath those shells because that could hurt. I'm always surprised. FGG, it, it strikes me as a brawler, but I'm pretty sure Frederick de Gross has the longest battleship range at tier eight. Pretty interesting. Some useless information there for you. <laughs> I have a lot of that. Okay, Hayate's on the flank. I don't know that I could hit that shot. And we do have to be careful here because we're kind of sailing into a, a crossfire. Turret Traverse isn't the best, but let's see if we can turn and maybe shoot the Shimanto. That's a pretty dangerous ship to be left alive. I don't know if you guys saw my recent review on that ship. Shimanto gets 30 millimeter pin. So, it, I mean, it's a pretty scary cruiser and we are met with overpins, which kind of sucks because again, this should be uh, this should be short fuse AP. We shouldn't get a lot of over penetrations on cruisers. That's okay. We'll take a shot at the Hayate. Honestly, our salvo might have been just a little bit high. And it, yeah, it's going to definitely come down to how you aim it. Also, Shimanto has a stepped citadel. So if we were too far back on him, then yeah, we might have just over, over penetrated his stern. Anyways, what do we got? A Masashi. Well, that's terrifying. Well, that's terrifying. Let's slam on the brakes and see if we can dodge the shells. And we did. Excellent, excellent. The torpedoes. Okay, I think these torpedoes are largely... Wow, that was terrible, Durka. <laughs> that was a really bad salvo. I think these torpedoes are largely useless. And it, it's kind of a trap that you can get into. You think, hey, I've got this fast battleship and I have torpedoes. I meant to brawl. I meant to push in with other BBs and like you know, torp them, kill them. I made that mistake. The first couple of games I played this ship, I thought, you know, that it was a viable part of my armament, but really it's not. <laughs> it's not. The ship is just way too vulnerable. The armor's too thin. It's not a good brawler. The Citadel is, is well above the waterline. Um, I think, you know, if Helen Keller were on the enemy team in basically any ship, she could pull a drive-by off on the Hawk because, you know, if you just aim anywhere out the side of the ship, you're probably going to get a Citadel hit. It's very, very squishy. The torp angles are also terrible, and the um, the arming distance, the threshold from the side of the ship, is pretty big. So you have to give kind of a wide berth, and it leaves you susceptible to getting gunned down before your torps even hit the enemy. Ask me how I know. All right, FDG, maybe we can clean him off the board here. The two ships over on A side, they're not really doing a lot. They're kind of sailing out. So I think I would rather head to C side and help our team over here because there are three battleships pushing and still a destroyer. I think our team can take care of A and be fine. As you can see, we're trying to not use our heals right now. We're just trying to let our health stay a little bit low to keep our reload buffed. And, uh, you know, that's just another reason that this kind of works on the Hawk, because it takes damage so readily. 32 millimeters of armor everywhere, HE salvos, or HE spam is going to be really hard on this ship. And then the fires, flam can with a 13% more fire chance. Again, something that to not really be upset about. You know, get yourself set on fire early game, and then reap the rewards of it for the rest of the game. Now, John Fisher also has a pretty interesting skill, his legendary skill, speed is my armor. So you're gonna not only be able to buff your battleship speed 5% at 16.4, but 
but it's also going to reduce the amount of damage you take from shells, bombs, torpedoes, all of that stuff when the boost is activated. And it could be an 8% buff. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to save my speed boost, we don't need it right now, but as soon as these guys go to target me, then we'll hit the speed boost and we'll kind of use it as a, a damage buffer. I'm kind of surprised Veneto's not looking this way. Let's see if we can get a cheeky AP salvo on the lightning. Uh oh, okay, Tamer Air might have caught me with my feet flat here. It's HE, but still, this ship is so lightly armored. Yeah, that definitely hurt. We should probably go ahead and hit our speed boost here, Durka. Little behind. We got a good hit on the lightning there. That's pretty good at such long range. This ship also has really terrible torpedo protection that you have to be careful of. 20%, I mean, that is that is low. Okay, here we go. Let's activate this. Tamer Air shooting AP again. And then we better start kind of kiting out. Because these guys are definitely paying attention to me now. We'll see if we can kind of prop juke a couple of their shells. Like most Royal Navy ships, I feel like this ship has pretty good acceleration. So you can use it to kind of prop juke. FTG, another salvo incoming from 18.2 kilometers from downtown Charlie Brown. I think we slammed on the brakes and those are going to miss. Oh, well, he got a pretty good salvo on us. But yeah, now that our health is getting down in the 20k mark, we should be seeing some 19 second, 18 second reloads. Let's see what it is after this one. 15,000 health. Let's shoot the Tamer Air again. Watch the reload. About 17 seconds. <laughs> now, you don't always want to keep your health this low, and obviously I want to pop this heal as soon as I can, but it just goes to show with this build and with John Fisher, these Brit battleships kind of get outrageous, like in the amount of DPM they can push out. And I think this would be a good viable build. You know, use the same exact setup, John Fisher, D. Ravel, Azerling, Colorado, on second thought, Flam Cannoneer, and then use it for ships like the Conqueror or the Monarch. I think on the Monarch, this could actually be like a stupid broken fire breather. And uh, yeah, stay tuned. I might test that out for you guys. All right, Musashi went down. We don't have to worry about him. So let's head over here. There's still a Veneto over here. We don't want to get in range of his secondaries. I hope he's turning back into a C. It looks like he is. That is good. Yeah, those secondaries would eat us alive. Yeah, this ship buffed. I think I think it got buffed because I mean it's a, it's a hard ship to play. The armor's so light and the citadel is so bad. It's difficult for our player base to understand. You know, like if the most of our player base is very casual, kind of get home from work, sit on the couch, chill. This looks like an Iowa. So why wouldn't I play it like an Iowa? And that would be to, you know, park bow in where you have most of your firepower facing the enemy and shoot. And it, when you play the ship that way, it's just not going to do well at all. So I do see why this ship got buffed. Um, I feel like my stats were actually pretty good in the ship before it got buffed. But now, I mean, this thing is definitely powerful and I would absolutely recommend going for it. Not to mention that when you get to the tier eight battleship, which is what, the Duncan? I believe the Duncan. I haven't played it yet, actually, but from what I hear, the Duncan is now one of our best tier eight battleships. And from what I know about PC Wowzel St. Vincent, uh oh. Yeah, FDG caught us in a turn. And that is something that you really have to watch out for these, these Brit battle cruisers. <laughs> one wrong turn like that and you could get yeeted. And we, we really did there. We're kind of lucky to be alive. But yeah, St. Vincent. In order to get that, that would be our legendary tier British battlecruiser, and to get it, you would probably have to play up this battlecruiser line. That's how the uh, Bureau projects have been going nowadays. So yeah, I would definitely start working on this line. There's definitely not been a better time to play them, and I believe the tier 6 battleship got buffed as well. Is that the Repulse? I can't remember. And I think the Revenge must be the premium version at tier 6. Hmm. I can't remember. Either way, though, those ships were buffed, so there's never been a, a better time to play the battle cruiser. So brawling. Yes, these torpedoes, we're just kind of dumping them at range because really, to me, that's all they're good at. This the ship has poor armor, a large turning circle, and then you saw the angles there. They're bad. So definitely not a brawler. Turn circle, 910 meters. That kind of sucks. 
and the rudder shift is also on the long side at 16.1. Luckily, the concealment is a great 14.8, and again, I think I buffed mine down to 12.7. That's very respectable, honestly. It's, uh, it'll keep you out of trouble. I think people in this game often overlook, you know, the importance of having a good concealment because they figure, hey, I'm gonna be firing my guns anyway, what does it matter? Well, positioning, getting into and out of positions and able to being able to move around the map at the beginning of matches is super important. You know, if you've ever played the Grocer Cur first, <laughs> a legendary tier, you spawn, you're the first one shot at, uh, it's annoying. You know, you can't really do anything or position at the beginning of matches. Here's FDG, let's test this AP. Okay, not bad. And we also better turn in quickly. Yeah, the maneuverability is just sometimes a little lackluster. Let's save our heal, we don't really need it. I would like to pick up the kill here. I guess it doesn't matter though, this match is pretty much over. Yeah, we'll save the heal for the absolute last second before he shoots again here. But overall, I'm loving this build, I'm loving the Hawk, and I'm excited to start playing this build on some other Brit battleships, including maybe the Duncan next, and maybe even testing it on the Conqueror. But yeah, I'm curious what you guys think of the Brit Battle Cruisers. Do you like them? Do you hate them? Let me know in the comments down below. Let's see how this match turned out. Not as good as our first one, but still 151. Not bad. Not bad. Well, this is Durka signing off. I'll catch you in the next video. See ya.